Hey everyone, it's the Tech Savvy Girl, and before we get started, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to these videos. So I'm Melissa, and I'm the Tech Savvy Girl, and this video is really about how I use SiteGround's tools to really speed up my website. If you are not using SiteGround, this video would not be too helpful to you. I would recommend looking at WP Rocket and some other things. I really hope to cover more about these resources in the upcoming videos I'm doing. And if you haven't moved to SiteGround yet, but you're thinking about it, I do recommend you checking out my blog post and then my video on how I moved from Bluehost to SiteGround. It gives you a little bit more detail on the benefits of moving to SiteGround along with how to do it. You do not have to move from Bluehost. It can be any hosting company. Just follow along with the video. There's some great tools, including the SG, or SiteGround migration tool. It's pretty so if you're planning to move to SiteGround and haven't yet done so, please check out the video. It's a step-by-step -step easy process on how you can migrate to SiteGround very easily. It doesn't have to be from Bluehost. It can be from any site that you are using. I do want to talk about some key points before we start. Some things to keep in mind are Google Page Speed Insights and GT Metrics are some great resources to test your website's speed performance. Not every site needs to be above 90% or an A to rank high on Google. Check your browser speed using incognito windows. Stop wasting your time trying to resize images. With the tools I'm about to show you, you will never need to resize manually or worry about losing quality of a picture. To give you a better idea on what I mean by sites do not have to score above a 90 to rank high on Google, we're going to take a look at page insights and we're going to run them against the keywords that rank high on Google. The easiest way to get to page speed insights is to type it into Google and go down to the first site where you'll see the developers dot and we're going to then copy over the websites we just looked up and do not take these speeds as 100%. You want to look at them and see what is potentially running slow on your site and what can you improve on it. You can't get rid of everything because you use things like Genesis and Elementor to design it and that will be on there, but it's key for your site and you don't want to have to pay a developer to write the whole thing in code. But there are stuff later on I'll teach you about. 57 mobile, 81 desktop. So they're still not ranking at 90% in the green where it says to get to the top of Google. So there's things that can be done according to this, but and here's another the sites. This is the second one down from Google. And it will show you an even worse score. So if you're seeing these scores, I wouldn't worry too much. I'll show you how to look at your site, see 20 mobile and desktop. So as you can see, websites that are ranking in the top of Google organically are still below that 90% marker. So you want to look at the recommendations and don't go word for word on them. We're going to test this using an incognito or a private window. This is very helpful because when you run it like this, you're seeing it for the first time. It's not picking up on the cache and cookies from a earlier time when you went to your website. If we have Safari open, we're going to go to File new private window. They don't call it an incognito window. And we'll take a look at Chrome too. Now it is a little different on Windows but you'll get an idea. You'll go to file again new incognito window or and this is very similar to Windows. We're going to go to the top three dots on the right. We're going to click on that and go to new incognito window. Now Microsoft Edge also calls it a private window. 
you can look. There's several ways to find out how to open a private window. I'm going to run my site, see what it looks like from an outside user's perspective, and it looks like it's pretty fast. The first tool I want to talk about when speeding up your site using SiteGround is SG Optimizer, which is an all-in-one tool that can be used to optimize speed on your website. SG Optimizer you're going to find is located on the left side lower corner of WordPress in the tools. So we're going to click on that and we're going to turn on dynamic catching, also automatic catch purge, and then we're going to scroll down a little and we're going to try to turn on memcache. It might turn on, but you might also need to try some settings. So what you want to do is you want to log into your SiteGround site and we're just going to change some of the catching stuff under speed. We're going to go up to the top to my websites or websites I should say. And then we're going to click on site tools at the top right. And we're going to go over to the left hand corner again and go down to speed and catching. And then we're going to turn these on or make sure they're on. These were already preset when I went to look. And dynamic catch, same thing. This seems to automatically be turned on. A lot of videos tell you to turn it on, but I don't see a way. And then we're going to click on memcache. We're going to turn this on. And then we can go back to the other setting and SiteGround if it didn't turn on to begin with. Next we're going to go up to the top and we're going to look at the environment optimization tools. We're going to enable HTTPS. We're also going to fix insecure content. We're going to leave the WordPress heartbeat optimization off. This does cause a lot of issues with speed if you leave it on. We're going to turn the DNS fetch on and we're also going to schedule database maintenance. This is important in backing up your site. SiteGround does give you a free tool to back up your site daily, which I do use. And in case of an update going wrong, it's very good to have. So you want to make sure all that's in place. The next thing we want to do is front-end optimization. We're going to minify the HTML output, we're going to minify the JavaScript files, and we're going to combine JavaScript files. You do want to test these settings just to make sure. Make sure you defer render blocking JS and minify J CSS. You want all of these basically on. Now for fonts preloading, we're going to go over to another site to see which fonts we need to load. And we're going to go to GT Metrics. It's a great tool. I recommend it over using site tools with Google. It just doesn't give you a lot of detail like this one does. Also, you'll notice like these aren't very accurate in speed tests, but it does give you an idea of what you need to do to make it better on the front end for people, or I should say on the back end, really. We're just going to run this test, and it only takes a few minutes. A lot of people use Google Speed Page Insights, which is fine. You will get the same information. It's just a little bit harder, I think, to use. And right now my site's performing at a B. I'm very happy with that. When you go to look at it on the front end, if you run it, it's pretty fast. You're not going to see any delay. We're going to go to the top and click on waterfall. These are going to tell you the different things that are loading 
pretty slow on your website. As you can see, mine are pretty low right now. I will point out that we want to take out the font, copy this link. This is very important. We're going to copy it. Any of the fonts you see that's having a hard time loading, we're going to copy and then bring back to preload it where we were. So I'm just going to copy and then I'm going to go to SiteGround and just paste it in and hit preload. I have a few fonts here and it really helped. We also want to turn these on to remove queries and dis disable emojis. Emojis can really slow down your site. I know a lot of people want to leave it on. The next few settings are very important though. The way I have it is the best way possible. I've turned everything off and on and spent hours trying to figure this stuff out. I'm telling you, the media optimization settings are great, but you have to use it exactly how I have it. You're going to turn on new image optimization. You're going to also turn on um, existing image optimization. This lets you set it and go. We're going to also do um, WebP copies. This is the way browsers now see new images. Um, a lot of these settings you do want to lead off even though they kind of sound, oh yeah, that's pretty good to have on. I've realized they've only slowed down your site. I was surprised that mobile optimization actually slows down the mobile part of your site. It makes no sense, I know. But please copy these settings. Don't do anything else. It's just a headache, I'm telling you. Another thing we want to talk about is um, this plugin for image optimization. You don't have to use the image optimization through SiteGround. A lot of people will use Short Pixel. It is an excellent way to optimize. It actually does a little bit better than SiteGrounds. This is free for a certain amount of photos, but if you have a lot of photos, I don't recommend you using this. It just you'll go down the rabbit hole of spending money, I'm telling you. Because even though the plans tell you that you get up to so many images a month, it's really not that many images. It's a lot less. They count images as points, and the points just, I'm telling you, they don't make sense. <laughs> so I'm going to install this plugin, and we're going to do the settings on it. Once it's activated, as you can see, I'm already over. It's just, it's a big hassle. But we're going to turn on lossy and we're going to apply all these checks and we're going to go over to advanced next. These are just some more settings too. You want to keep your images under a certain amount, and I just did the default. And the default was perfect. And over to advanced. And you want to turn on automatic and adjust your images. Also create the WebP. Like I said before, this is a new way, browsers. And if you create these type of images as well, it's going to just improve your site speed so much more. Just make sure everything over here is checked the way I have it, and it will be great. I mean, this is far better than SiteGround's tool. And once that's done, we're going to go down and hit, or go back to general, and we're going to do a bulk optimization. This will take a while for it to go. I, you can just set it and walk away and then come back to it. Just leave the window open, otherwise it's just going to start all over again. It really does help with speed a lot more.
Now I'm just going to show you a few of the account settings because like I said there are some free ones. And okay, let's try it a different way. We're just gonna go to upgrade and check out the pricing. So I have it at sixteen thousand a month. I do not have sixteen thousand images. I or actually I have it at seven thousand. I don't even have that much. And you just keep going up and up. I thought about coming back next month and just trying it again, but as you can see there's a bunch of different plans. There's also a one-time fee plan which applies credits. A lot of people will do that. It's pretty popular. And there's like a few different options. Again, the points, nothing compares to this, but it's very odd. I noticed the WebP takes away points and the other conversion takes away points so the more things you do turn on yes it's better but it's going to cost you a lot more in the long run obviously. These settings, though, have really helped me, and I really hope it helps you. Thanks for watching, everyone. I really hope these steps improved your speed on your website. Stay tuned for more great videos.